I want to let you know that God wants you to seek His presence, live in His presence, abide in His presence, to hide under the shadow of the Almighty. Only there our life is transformed. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. And so we see that Lot and Abraham, we're going to take a look at Lot and Abraham. The first obstacle to the presence of God is I call it the proximity of the place. It's when you are in the right place and you think that because you're in that place, you are already in the presence of God. See, being in a group that's not far from God, it's not being the same thing as being close to God. Lot was close to Abraham, yet he was far from the Lord. There's a group of people in Matthew chapter 7 who come to Jesus and they say, we cast out demons in your name. We heal the sick in your name. We prophesy in your name. You know, and I don't like that verse. The reason why is because it's always used against our church. Because we finally start doing all the three things. <laughs> because before it was demons and the healing of the sick and now we have a prophetic encounter. Thank you Jesus. And so now that verse applies to our church. And I feel like every person I meet who uses that verse, it's always against us. Or anything miracles that happen, they're like, well, it's that verse is against you. But I want you to notice something in that verse that maybe you have never seen before. It does not say, I cast out demons, I heal the sick. We, meaning the people who were rejected from Jesus did not do exorcism, healing and prophecy. They belong to a group that did it. They themselves, it's like this, it's like saying, we went to faith assembly for race to deliver there's two thousand people that went to faith assembly being in a group that casts out demons heals the sick and prophesies you can be there and there is a notion of being in the right place is i am close to the presence but these people and many of us in here can prove otherwise that you can be close to church and far from christ but today I want us to step over that hindrance and to realize that the place of God is so that we can encounter the presence of God. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 15, Jesus speaks three parables and He talks about a shepherd who loses a sheep, a woman who loses a coin and a father who has a prodigal son. And the woman who had nine, ten coins, she loses a coin in the house. It's kind of like losing keys. Losing a coin in the house. I want you to notice the woman did not lose a coin somewhere in the backyard. It was right there in the house. And then she started to sweep the house, turn on the light, remove the dirt, remove the darkness so she can find the coin. I believe the similar situation is happening today with Christianity. Many children of God are lost in church not in the world not in sin but in church Catholics are lost in church Christians are lost in church and God the Father is taking and sweeping through the church sweeping through our lives sometimes removing the darkness and removing the dirt to find children because just because you're in a house it doesn't mean you're in his presence and God wants you to be in His presence, not just be in the right place where He is omnipresent. The first hindrance to the presence of God is thinking that because I am close to Abraham, meaning because I'm close to church, I'm close to God. It's good to be close to Abraham, but Abraham has to introduce you to Jehovah, to Yahweh, to Adonai, to the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who was, is and is to come. Somebody say praise the Lord. You know, I'm pretty sure that each one of you, if you uh, live in the United States and registered with the government, have gotten one of these. Where you get summoned to be in jury. How many of you got an invitation? All right. And so I enjoyed the privileges of not speaking English earlier. Because one of the excuses you can put there for not going to be a juror is I don't speak in the English. I don't speak English. And now that that's not true, um, I remember a few years ago I was summoned to be a jury and praise God I had a trip. And so that was a good excuse not to go there. 
and so um, I just don't like, no offense, I love our justice system and I like how it's done probably better than other countries, but I just don't like to take a week of my life and hear how somebody butchers somebody else and decide whether they're guilty or not. We have lawyers and judges for that and let them figure that out. I want to live my life. But when I got this, when I came back from Kingdom Domain last week and I saw that I've been summoned and I have five days to respond and, and over there it says that if you don't come, you are violating this, this, this statue. You pretty much can become a felon by not responding when you've been summoned. The fear of the Lord came over me. I quickly signed and said, I'm going to Philippines and leave me alone. What I got convicted of is this, is that every single Christian has gotten one of these. Where God the Father has summoned you into His presence. And many of us, we treat this way better than the request from God to be in His presence. Your Father has not invited you to become a member of Hungry Gen, though that is good. But He has summoned you to be in His presence. The first benefit of living in God's presence is that God the Father finds pleasure in your company. He desires your presence. The scripture says we love Him because He first loved us. In order to fall in love with God's presence, you must get it through your thick skull, this revelation. God the Father loves your presence. In fact, He loves it so much, He has scars on His hands and a scar on His side to prove that your presence was worth dying for. So that His presence can be worth living for. Come on somebody. I really think that we've been summoned by God into His presence. It's not an option. For me to live in God's presence is not an upgrade to Christian life. It's the only life I have. The only life you have, you have to respond to God's call. God is waiting for you in His presence. God is waiting. He is sweeping through. Sadly for many people, He's waiting too long without anybody showing up. If you don't show up to God's presence, God will start sweeping your life. He will remove things that you depend on and your world will fall apart until God gets you. He's not after your boyfriend, your job. He's passionately in love with you. And when God searches things, He finds them. You know what He's looking for right now? You. Like the woman was looking for a lost coin. God wants you in His presence. So bad, He's willing to sweep things. Break things if He needs to. Why? Because He created you for His pleasure. And He sent His Son to die to get you. That's why the church exists, is that you find the presence of God. You know why church exists? So God finds the presence of you. Come into His presence. Make time during every day. I'm not talking about prayer right now. I'm talking about being in the presence of God. Being closeness with the Holy Spirit. Taking that time where, where you alone just separate yourself and you say, Father, show me your glory. I want to see your glory. I want to see your countenance. I want to see the, the closeness of who you are. The closeness of who you are. Whether it's in the morning or whether it's at night. Whether it's during the day, whether it's in your work, but finding His presence. Because when you find His presence, He finds yours. And when He finds your presence, there's a pleasure in the heart of the Father. The first obstacle to living in God's presence is the proximity of a place. It's thinking that because I'm in the right place, I'm in the presence of God. And when you begin to break that down, you recognize God the Father loves your presence so much. And when you respond, when you realize you've been summoned by God to be in His presence, you come, you recognize the Father loves you so much. He loves your presence more than you will ever love His. That's a huge, huge revelation. And if you grasp it, it will forever change the way you pray. If you grasp what I'm just sharing with you, it will forever change the way you see church, the way you see worship, the way you see the Bible, and the way you see prayer, and the way you see fasting, and the way you see everything God the Father asked you to do here. Otherwise, we will live our life constantly trying to measure up how much we love God and looking at our love for God and it will only decrease if you focus on it. But if you focus on His love for you, your love for Him will increase. If you focus on your love for Him, it will decrease. Thank you.